bring in uh, Tom Kern. He's a Patriots insider, NBC Sports Boston. Let me start with the snarky poll question. Who feels worse today, Bill Belichick or Robert Kraft? Bill Belichick. And he should. He's the one who didn't know what he was looking at over the last five years. And the guy was standing right in front of him. So now he's mining the draft and mid-tier free agents to find a replacement that'll pay more than he was willing to pay the guy who won the Super Bowl. Kraft, at least, Dan said, we'd really like to have him stay. But I, I was wondering about that, that he, and, and maybe this is credit to Robert Kraft, that he allows his coaches to coach or, you know, he gets out of the way. Mm -hmm. But at some point, it's your team that he never thought of big footing Bill Belichick to say, I can't let Tom Brady play in another uniform. And I think that Bill convinced him that the trepidation of a guy at 43 years old, Robert, what are we going to do? We're going to pay him this much money. And if he starts to go over the cliff, then what? And Robert had to look at it and say, look, who's easier to replace? The quarterback that I think Bill can do because I saw him do it in 2008 with Matt Castle or replace Bill and his scouting staff and his coaching and the special teams acumen and everything else. The easier thing to do is say goodbye to the 43-year-old as much as it tears my heart out. If I would have told you 11 months ago this was going to be the result, what would you have said? It wouldn't shock me. I mean, at the beginning of the year, I said that Tampa would win the Super Bowl. They would go 13-3 and three and win the Super Bowl. And it's because of how good Tampa kind of was. Yeah. I mean, they were seven and nine last year. Their quarterback threw 30 picks. They lost six games, I think it was, by a touchdown or less. Just bring somebody in with a level of competency, and you're going to be good. Bring the best there's ever been who can infuse discipline into everybody. You're going to be really friggin' good. So I wouldn't have been surprised, Dan. You know, the last two weeks, Brady has taken the high road when it comes to Bill Belichick. Like, verbal bouquets and, like, what do you think he really feels about how this ended, his relationship with Belichick, because he he said what you would want him to say, so he didn't draw any more attention to this, you know, fractured relationship. I think he imagines now or feels now that this is for the best, and he's not looking back. And for us who are continuing to chase the car like a bunch of dogs, we're nipping at the bumper. He's just driving along. He doesn't even know we're back there. I mean, he has moved on, and I think it's one of those things. There is There is a whole different world out here that I can enjoy and do things differently in. I think it was painful as hell for him, but Bill kind of made it easy to divorce himself from New England by allowing him to picture himself someplace else. You know, I'm telling a story in the column I'm writing about how I sat with Guerrero, Alex Guerrero, last year, two days before the Super Bowl. We were flying out of Miami, and I was looking back at some of the notes I took, and what Guerrero had said at that time, January 31st, 2020, all he wants is the coach to signal that he wants him to stay. That's all he wanted. But he never got that. And never then, did. Yeah. If you look at the accomplishments for Brady, where does last night rank? To me, Dan, it's a validation. It's, uh, you know, I think 28 to 3 is greater. I think that the Super Bowl in 2014 was more high level football. But I think this is a validation. He, he is now the greatest team sports performer in pro sports history. He's not the greatest athlete. I don't even know if he's the greatest football player of all time because you still have Jerry Rice sitting out there with some absurd numbers. But he trumps Jordan and Russell and Gretzky as the greatest team sports performer, able to go into a 53-man roster, an 80-man team with coaches and infuse it. It's not basketball like LeBron and Jordan. It's one guy impacting almost 100 people. And what I, I've said all morning long is that there is – if you're a young player, you just look at him. He's the most animated. He's, you know, in people's faces, whether it's the opponents or you. He, there's accountability. You know, it's what you want in a leader. You know, he doesn't play at a high level the way he once did. But that confidence level, I don't think can be understated, certainly for a team that was probably impressionable like Tampa was, uh, that they were looking for something. They were looking that if things go bad, He's not letting us go, you know, south. And I, I you know, there, there's something to be said about that in his ability to lead. 
You know, I wonder what those days were like after he had the four fingers up and confused the downs. I mean, that's if Jameis Winston does that or Nick Foles or whoever. I mean, the whole team probably is like, oh, my God. And there were probably guys looking at Brady and going, this guy's, I mean, come on. He's screaming at us and he can't get the downs right. Yeah. But whatever it is that he does to infuse that team with, don't worry about it. I got it. It's amazing. And and you talk about the performance. It is the same as it's always been, Dan. It's it's whatever you need. If you need 505 against Philadelphia to give you a shot, he'll do that. If you need what he brings to get 28-3, he'll do that. If it's five for nine for 60 yards in the second half last night, fine. That's fine, too. Uh, you created some headlines saying that Matthew Stafford did not want to go to New England. Uh, recap that story, and was there any fallout after that report? I was told Sunday, hours after Stafford had agreed to go to Los Angeles, that a team in negotiations with Detroit was told that Stafford was willing to really go anywhere but New England. He had said, I don't want to go to New England. So that was noteworthy, the person thought, who had been in negotiations to share with me. The fallout, I think, was interesting because, to me, it – legitimized what we look at the Patriots post Brady as being. It's a team in rebuild mode and it's a team that's not a lot of fun to play for. It's a team that talks about no days off when you're 33, you want some days off. I mean, that's not a picnic to come up into the Northeast. You're Matthew Stafford. You've been playing inside. You're 33 years old. You haven't won anything. And you're going to go rebuild in the cold and play in Buffalo and the Meadowlands, whatever it is. Uh, That doesn't sound like a good time. And that's why I think it's hard for the Patriots to, you know, say we are who we were when Brady was here. Also, you have the Gronk situation that he chose retirement over possibly playing again, I guess, with the Patriots if they wanted him back. Just the fact that he he could have fun, that freeing feeling, I guess. Um, does that surprise you, though, that Gronk wanted to come back but only wanted to come back if he's going to have fun and play with Brady? No, uh, because in 2018, before they won their final Super Bowl, the Patriots were trying to trade Gronk to Detroit. I mean, that was damaging to him. And then they spent that whole season. I mean, he was mentally racked by uncertainty about whether he could play, where his body was at. And, you know, as he explained to me at the Super Bowl, you're doing things to your body that are unnatural. And they keep asking you every week to go out and practice all week and do it again on Sunday. I mean, he wanted to be managed at that point. He felt his body was so beat up that he wanted to have himself managed in a different way. And the Patriots were not, you know, acceding to that. And that's where Bill is. Everybody's on the same level. Everybody's on the same plane. No special favors, especially for guys who are making $15 million or $12 million. But there comes a point where the point you're trying to make is going to lose some people. I also wondered about this, and that is, if I'm New England, if I'm Bill Belichick, how do I, not that he's competing with Tom Brady, but if I want to re-energize this franchise, can they go all in and get Deshaun Watson? I think Deshaun Watson is going to be of the same mind that Matthew Stafford was. And that is, I, I don't want to go. And honestly, too, Dan, think about this. In this age of players who are making so much money, especially in the NFL and finding their voices in a way that they haven't previously. Clearly Deshaun Watson is most pissed off because they didn't give him a seat at the table to, to, to converse. There's not a seat at the table. You're not even in the room (laughs) in new England. So he's not going to want to come up here and just, you know, be a workaday guy hitting the punch, punching his time clock every day and coming in and leaving. He wants to be in there. And Belichick's going to cool. But, but, but Brady never had any input on personnel decisions in New England at all? Nope. No one does. The personnel guys barely do. (laughs) And then here he is. He should get GM votes, uh, GM of the year with what he did in Tampa, that you get in. (laughs) He he recruits Antonio Brown, somehow gets him. Leonard Fournette comes in and Gronk comes in, and all three score touchdowns last night. I mean, it's wild. It it, it really is to see, you know, that performance. And it's funny because throughout these playoffs, Dan, I think there's been this – pushback that Brady is carrying the Buccaneers. It's Tom Brady. And he just did what was necessary. He staked the team to a lead against the Packers. Played played fine. You know, the picks in the second half, people took that as a smoking gun that he's not very good. You know, same thing with New Orleans. It was the way they undressed 
Drew Brees, it wasn't Brady. And I think it was a straw man argument. No one was saying that Tom Brady was out there putting up triple doubles. He was just playing the game as it needed to be played in the postseason, which is kind of what he's always done. Do you think Belichick watched the game last night? Boy, that's a great question. I would imagine he probably did. I, I would imagine he probably did. When do you uh, see Belichick again? When's the media get in front of Belichick to ask that you know, question? Yeah, normally it would be at the owners' meetings at the end of March, but I would see that the the chance of that happening are very slim. So probably not until a pre-draft audience that he gives us. Cause I can't imagine he's going to ring us up and see how we're all doing. I just don't <laughs> see that coming down the line. Will you ask that question if given the opportunity? Would you send me a coffee if I did? Yes. Done. All right. That's easy. It's a lar- It's an extra large hot coconut with milk and three Splenda. Oh, three Splenda. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll take care of that. It might be a little cold by the time it gets to you, but it will get to you. Fair enough. Right. Thank you, Tom. Good to talk to you, buddy. And All right. Enjoy the rest of your year. That's Tom E. Curran, <laughs> Patriots insider for NBC Sports Boston, who joins us on the program.